Hi there, connecting the elevator to the horizontal stabilizer. First, I install the rod end bearings using this PVC pipe that is notched out. The rod end bearings get pretty snug and this helps with their installation. Here I am leveling the horizontal stabilizer. Blocks of wood are positioned under the aft spar and then I place drywall screws to anchor the front down to the table. Here you can see the drywall screws anchor down. Here the elevators are attached temporarily. I got the bolts in place which was a bit challenging with my fat fingers. They don't give you much clearance to hold everything in position and put the bolts in at the same time. Next, I need to make a hole in the elevator control horn. The kit comes with this drill guide bushing. It helps center your hole and prevent your drill from messing up the bearing you're drilling through. The drill guide is slightly oversized. Using my drill press as a lathe, I slowly file a small amount of metal off so it fits nicely in the hole. The tiny hole in the control horn is what I drilled. It is upsized to fit a bolt. The same process is used for the other elevator. Here both sides are done and the bolt is in place. Another hole in the control horns will link the two elevators together. This is accomplished after leveling the elevators to the horizontal stabilizer. A mark is placed on one of the control horns. Next a drill guide is made from a block of wood. This is used so you can drill a straight line from one control horn to the other. I cut and shaped these shims that will fit to the front horizontal stabilizer attached brackets. They are adhered to the attached brackets via carpet tape. There are alignment holes in the aft section of the horizontal stabilizer that clico to the attachment holes in the fuselage uprights. Here you can see the clicos in place. Just above and below each Clico is where you drill your holes to attach the horizontal stabilizer with bolts. There are a total of four bolts on the aft section of the stabilizer. The attachment points for the front of the horizontal stabilizer. There is a center hole location on the fuselage that is used to measure each tip of the horizontal stabilizer for squareness, left and right. Once this is found, a block is wedged and clamped in place to prevent movement. Holes are then drilled through each hole in the attachment brackets. The vertical stabilizer is attached with several bolts going down its spine. Each hole was only piloted and needed up drilling. Here you can see the bottom bolts are flush mounted. The front of the vertical stabilizer is attached with one bolt. And of course, I did not get a close up. And here the rudder is uh, temporarily mounted. There was no problems with that. That went on pretty easy. The pushrod tube is a round cylinder that you need to cut to size. There are two attachment fittings that go on each end. The fittings have internal threads on one end and are flat on the other. They get attached to the push rods, the push rod tubes with blind rivets. I needed to take a fine amount off the fitting in order for it to fit the cylinder perfectly. After spraying primer internally, I riveted the fitting on. 
And here it is in place. This is the elevator trim bracket. There are several pieces you need to fabricate before assembling. After this assembly, this video will come to an abrupt stop. I cannot really connect it to the elevator until I'm ready to leave my horizontal and vertical stabilizer permanently mounted. This is the Ray Allen uh, trim servo motor. You need to trim off some of the thickness of the plastic before this tab will fit the, uh, the arm.